Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. Good evening, good evening, greetings to you wherever you are, fellow countrymen and women, followers and friends. Thank you for joining me in this broadcast. As promised, I did tell you that um, I would share with you the full inside story about the story that is trending. The good news, I'm sure you all know by now, and if you don't know, then I don't know where you've been. Pamela has been found alive. And she's not just alone, but with 12 other girls that were kidnapped. She's found, she was found alive today in Kawata constituency, where I belong, in um, Libala in particular. I think Chalala is under Libala. That's where she was found, together with uh, 12 others. As we speak, uh, they are somewhere at the health facility. Not sure if it's scans or UTH, but they are all safe and sound at... Um, a health facility either skanze or uth so my coming here is just to share with you what i saw and what i've learned while i was on the ground there together with the police and many other people who came to witness that scene where we are thankful that at long last our prayers have been answered and pamela has against all odds been found alive now if you're just tuning in now please share this video share it with as many people as you can because i'm going to give you the full inside story you might not hear about it ever again it might be the last time we're going to speak about this because now we have closure and i think which what will follow will just be to get more details perhaps from the victims themselves when they have garnered enough strength and courage to come and speak about what horrors they have faced so let's get into it first of all how did it all happen i must make mention that uh, before we do anything or say anything let's recognize a young boy named robbie i think for me and many others robbie is the star of this show if we can call it a show at all robbie came to the rescue he's a young boy probably about 18 or 19. robbie if it wasn't for robbie uh, i don't know if we'd be speaking about pamela or if we'd even know that pamela and 12 others exist the courage the fortitude and the strength which this boy exhibited i think warrants him to be awarded the next time our president to be awarding heroes on freedom day i don't know if it's independence day i think robbie above all others deserves this award but that is not to say that zp or zambia police didn't do their duty i think uh, zp for a very long time i think we're working undercover uh much of what they were doing they did not share for a very good reason but uh, i've learned to, to today that they have been working and actually uh yesterday zambia police actually conducted a search in the same area they were very close yesterday it wasn't just today but yesterday they conducted the search in the very same street where this uh, house of rituals where pamela and others were found is located they were very close i don't know what technology they were using but something or somehow or is it a tip off they were led to that very street where pamela and 12 others were being held but they missed the house i think they missed it by two three four houses away from where they did conduct the search uh, they went there, they asked a bit of questions here and there, they didn't get what they wanted, and so they left. And frankly, uh, speaking, I think ZP, uh, under very difficult circumstances, have done their level of best to keep on searching. Reports kept on reaching them. I didn't know that there were 12 other uh, uh, captives or kidnapped girls that were being held. I was only learning today. So this kidnapping had been going on for a very long time. The oldest victim being um, uh, Pamela. And and um, Faith, yes, Faith Miluti. Faith Miluti is also alive. Pamela, Faith Miluti. Remember, these were the first um, two incidences that happened that uh, really struck the nation. And for in the case of Faith Miluti, Faith Miluti, I really got interested. That's why I got interested in these issues of kidnappings. Because Faith Miluti 
if you remember she's the mother to that kid who that was um, uh, uh, hit on the head and uh, left for dead that's the mother thankfully she's uh, she's alive as well as well as other young ladies I'm learning to say some of them are nurses one of them actually is a nursing student at um, is it uh, Gideon Roberts University the other one a student at uh, Kabenti University the other ones were kidnapped in Chilanga they are all those reports which we did not know about and I'm guessing that we didn't know about them because uh, the police or the families themselves wanted to keep this to themselves because it became very clear to say that um, going out or coming out in the public was risking the lives of uh, these young ladies so now that we have given a background into the whole discovery of Pamela and um, uh, the two of others, I think we can get into it. But of course, I want you to know that um, this operation or this discovery of Pamela and two of others isn't without uh, its casualties. There are actually two casualties, or should I say fatalities. Um, one of the um, girls did actually say that uh, two people were killed, one a young man and the other a young lady, and they were buried at that very same site. So I think the work for ZP is not complete. I don't know if it's that same site or whatever, but there are bodies, there are two bodies that have to be found. And uh, it's quite unfortunate that that has happened. We can only commiserate and mourn with the families of these um two young people one lady and one young man we don't know their names yet but we are told that um, they were murdered quite unfortunate but uh, all in all i think we need to thank god that um, we still have others alive these these other 12. and now i want to take you into the step-by-step -step, uh, incident or the step-by-step -step, uh, operation as it happened today i think i came to learn about it uh, around uh, 15 hours the whole incident i think happened around uh, 13 hours Hours. At 13 hours, a young lady, one of the captives, ma um, managed to break free. The, uh, one of our captors or one of these uh, criminals was left on guard. Uh, the other three, we don't know where they had gone, but they had left. Uh, they had left the place. So they had left one person uh, on guard, uh, looking after uh, or minding these uh, young ladies. And um, as it has been, and it's a it's a horrific story, really. You really have to hold on and um, hold yourself because some of the the things that were being said are really heartbreaking. You can imagine these young ladies were being raped every day. They were being raped repeatedly by these criminals every day where they were they were when i entered that house and by the way the the the, the crime scene itself there's a yard and there are two houses the, f the first one which is closer to the gate is a very big it's a big house i'm sure you've seen it on social media it's been captured on ZNBC. i think that's just the main house it's not the house where the actual girls the, the actual crimes were happening the other house is a much smaller house, uh, three-roomed, which was further at the back of the yard. The kind of houses that you build and put over into something like that, you know, like a quarter, like it's a very small house at the far back of the uh, of the yard. That's where they were they were being kept. All the windows were sealed shut. And um, when when I entered, the first thing that greeted me was um, blood stains. Um, not blood stains that indicate say that someone was being hit or tortured, but the kind of blood stains which which portray sexual abuse, you know. They, there were all sorts of uh, beddings and linen lying about, and um, there was you could tell to say, I don't know how to put it, but um, you could tell to say on these beddings people were being raped, they were being forced, and uh, there were stains, all kinds of uh, stains. Uh, were there so well, that is what happened today they ran out of their luck and uh, this guy who was left on guard um i don't know if he had been drinking or what but um he tried to rape this girl again and by the way these guys were had been shopping for condoms according to robbie our young hero um they had been shopping for con from for condoms at the nearby shop they would buy condoms and pads almost every day these are things that they were using to 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 abuse to sexually abuse these uh, young ladies and um they had all these condoms and everything they were pads lying around and uh, when this guy tried to rape this young lady the one who managed to get away the one that got away um somehow miraculously this girl managed to escape because uh, they used to tie them every time they would leave they would tie them they would uh, tie clothes on their mouth on their on their mouths and they would even inject them 
I don't know what they would, the sedatives, you people were in the medical profession, they would always regularly inject them with sedatives so that they are consistently weak. So I don't know how this young lady gathered the strength to manage to fight off this guy. That's how she she got out of the house, leaped over a fence. That is, you know, fences with a razor wire, the neighboring fence. She leaped over the fence with a razor wire, jumped into the next yard and uh, went to call for help. She was banging on the door. Like that's when Robbie, our young hero, came out. And she explained to say, I'm one of those girls that were being kidnapped. There are, there are others of my friends that, um, that are left behind. Please help us. Robbie did not hesitate. Robbie did not think about his own safety. Robbie did not think to say, hey, what about if they also kidnap me and kill me? Robbie just got his axe. An axe. That's the only weapon that he had. He didn't get, he didn't have a gun, he didn't have stone. He just got an axe, rushed to the, to the neighbor, called his friends and says, guys, this is what is happening. And when I say called his friends, I'm talking about young boys, somewhere between 18, 19, perhaps the oldest was, was 20. That's how they mobilized themselves and went into that yard. Now listen very carefully. When they arrived at that house, the first thing that greeted them was a human being there dressed in black. Huh? A human being there dressed in black. The moment they arrived, Robbie is not sure whether this person disappeared, according to his word, vaporized, evaporated, or he, where, nobody knows where he got away. But this person just ran. If he disappeared, he disappeared red. Now, any other person or any other group of people would have been spooked to see someone, they find someone by the door, then that someone just vanishes out of nowhere. Because the, fence, the, the, the premises is fenced, highly fenced on either side, with razor wire on the other side. Where did this person uh, jump off to? Those of you who believe in Juju and those of you who believe in charms, I think uh, this would have spooked anybody. But these young boys were not spooked. They forged ahead went into the house and lo and behold they found all these 12 young ladies all these 12 young ladies were found tied because that's how they used to leave them when they when, when they when they leave the house they were tied so they untied them and managed to remove all of them and we are told to say that there is one one young lady who who is heavily pregnant and it's possible what we just don't know if she came there pregnant or is this thugs that impregnated her we don't know but she was heavily heavily uh, pregnant and um you could even tell to say from what uh, robin narrated she was the last one to come out and she was resisting she was resisting to come out i don't know if she she couldn't believe that she had been rescued or what she she resisted you know sometimes these people with charms and uh, you know they inject them with all these drugs and all that they might have become confused and disoriented so she didn't know what was happening but they managed to get her out and when they managed to get her out they secured the matter certain house and then robbie and his friends now contacted um contacted uh, the police kawata police in particular kawata police was the first responder because uh, the uh, the area talala falls under the administration of uh, kawata police and that's how kawata police uh, came to the scene I, I i i was far away myself when i reached i just found kawata police on the scene all over and the mob of people who were gathered there i couldn't believe my eyes i couldn't even believe when they called me to say pamela has been, I, could, I, I couldn't believe i was like how how possible is it how possible is it that she's uh, she's been found alive? How did she get away? So we, we get to learn to say that um, actually um, there was the syndicate. There was a syndicate of these people that uh, were, were kidnapping. Of course, you know that there is one that has been apprehended. You know there are three others that have been released by Zambia Police Spokesperson Ray Monga. I think mug shots are being shared everywhere. And I encourage you, find these uh, mug shots or, or, or portraits of these uh, suspected criminals who by now are on the run. And I think they won't get far because uh, some of them are known by some of you people on social media. These are people you, you, you would never suspect. You would never suspect to say some of them were even wearing a, a regalia which of course other people want to make a propaganda out of but that doesn't matter whether they are red green or whatever these are criminals and they'll be brought to book they have to be brought to book so it was a very very comp a, a, a intricate syndicate and um, the story is that um, these young ladies were kept alive for the primary purposes of um, rituals and this is very true because 
there was a coffin by the way in that in that house there was a coffin huh what would the coffin be doing in a house of of kidnappers there was a coffin then when you enter what i think was their their ritual their ritual the, the room which they used to use for ritual that's where there was a coffin on the ground there was also a pentagram you know a pentagram is a five-pointed star those of you uh, who know something about occultism and satanism you know that the pentagram is a very symbolic uh, kind of uh, image when it comes to issues of uh, of satanism so they drew a pentagram a five-pointed star and then that five-pointed star was in a in a circle they drew it with chalk white chalk it was in a circle then on three points of that pentagram or that five-pointed star there were red dots three red dots and those were, were not just ordinary red dots those were blood spots they had put blood spots on those uh, three red uh, uh, dots then uh, in the four corners of the room there were um, red ribbons that put uh, red ribbons all around and there was a coffin on the coffin there were um, coins that put three coins on the on the on, on the coffin so it was very much an issue of rituals those of you who had been following from the time this kidnapping started some of you were saying these things are rituals you were right these were definitely rituals and from what we learned uh, we hear to say that uh, those two young um, the young man and the young lady those that have been murdered and buried at that same site believed to have been buried at that uh, same site these two apparently the charms had rejected them uh, we are told to say that the, the charms the, the charms or the initiation failed for those two so they said ah, these are useless let's get, get rid of them that's how they were murdered so it was a place of rituals it was a place of rituals when you enter it really i don't know how to put it it was you could even feel the atmosphere change it was creepy it was dark because they had closed all the all the windows it was very creepy then there was um they were about mattresses you know these mattresses again had blood stains they were stained they were dirty there was linen bed sheets all dirty there was a certain room that was uh, used as a, as a as a as a toilet you look at it even cells even toilets in cells are better and those of you who have been in police cells you know what kind of toilets are there but if you look at that toilet even being in police cells is better it was filthy and just next to it that's where what appeared to be what they were using as a kitchen that's where it was then you could see the food that was there the lamps of unshima even a dog can't eat i tell you even a dog can refuse to eat that kind of that kind of food they were living as if in the, they were they were kept like animals you could see to say this is not this isn't an environment which can keep human beings they were kept by animals and i i was wondering to see how were these girls surviving all these months six months in such an environment it's like it's like a, a, in hell that place can best be described as hell the fortitude the mental strength these girls had to go through i don't know i think it's just it's by god it's a miracle i think just god gave them the strength to endure because just five days or ten days there you can go mad you can go mad I, I swear you can just you can just die from depression but pamela and faith miluti the, the one of the first to be kidnapped they survived there for six months and those of you that have seen pictures of faith that are trending on um on social media she still has a strength physically well of course she still has a strength but uh, maybe psychologically it will take a lot of rehabilitation but all in all the place where they were kept was very very filthy it's not even a fit for human habitation then talk about the consistent rape of these young ladies you know and these three people used to use condoms eh? and that's what is trick because rapists using condoms we would just yourself a question why were they why were they using condoms because criminals common criminals don't use don't use protection for what they don't use that but these become big buyers they were big buyers these were big buyers of condoms 
every day they were buying condoms they were buying they were buying pads and of course robbie and his friends used to see them and by the by their description they said these were very normal people you don't suspect anything if you see them they were just normal people like like like, like you and me and if you look at the mug shots which have been uh, circulated by the police you can tell to say these are young normal people if you meet if you met one if you met one you don't even suspect that really they, these can be the criminals who can commit such hideous crimes and some of you these people even used to chat with you on facebook i know of one lady who even shared some screenshots where this other person was wishing her a happy birthday so we live among these criminals we live among these criminals and these criminals were very very ritualistic these were rituals get get rich quick steam so these girls were raped on a daily basis the things they had to endure the things they had to endure we can only we can only imagine and we we, we can't we can't i i find it even difficult to put myself in those shoes because i can't imagine what they used to what they used to go through but but they've survived and so many things happened to them like i told you they were in the room there were also things which are like they call they are called valves test tubes there were a number of test tubes tuned all around and these are believed to have contained substances which they used to to inject them they would inject them on a i don't know how a, how often but the whole point was when they inject them these are substances which are used in theaters if they inject you with that with that you go to sleep so we don't know if they put them to sleep they perform rituals they would put them in a coffin i don't know what was going on but basically they were being sedated regularly because there were two of people i mean couldn't they have screamed one wonders couldn't they have screamed because if really they shouted loud people in the next house behind and on the left either side could have heard something but they never used to be shouting which makes me believe to say that truly they were being sedated with those um, substances which kept them very 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 weak and it's a miracle that that girl that was that the other guy tried to rape the one who got away I, it's a miracle that she found the strength because under those sedatives you those of you have been under the knife those that have gone in the theater if they inject you with that they can even open you up if you are giving birth to scissors you won't even feel the pain that's how powerful those uh, those drugs are people can do anything to you you'll be watching you'll be paralyzed you won't feel anything those are the thing, kind of things that they used to to inject them with so there is all there was all sorts of things that were that were that that were going on but all in all we thank god we thank robbie and his uh, and his team and we thank the young lady that could have just escaped and run her way and saved her own life but she had the mind she had the presence of mind to say i've escaped there but i've left my sisters i also have to go back for my sisters to me that lady is a hero because she not only looked at saving her own life but also the lives of the people that she had left in that uh, in that room 12 of them young lady we are proud of you we are praying for you we want to have a full you to be fully recovered and we are appealing to our leaders let's help these young ladies if we have never pulled our resources together just to appreciate because i don't know how even we can appreciate them they have been through so much i think they should never be allowed to suffer ever again in their lives something must be done for them beyond awarding them with any kind of title or whatever but i think we have to help them settle in their life them and their families they have been through so much so what is the current situation the current situation is that um the culprits are on the run of course there are, there is other information which i which i have regarding the same um the whole incident but i am afraid i have to restrict myself to what i'm telling you because investigations are underway and like i've said the police still need to track those others so there are one or two things that are still going on uh efforts are still going on to 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 hunt down these other criminals but all in all a suspect was picked up you've all seen the the pictures and uh, he's not alone he wasn't acting alone that's far from the truth he wasn't acting alone there there are people at that house that even just they just used to come i'm told they used to uh, which doctors nanga at nanga zenzo buera people just was so nanga zipita na bizipita zinge na zichoka People didn't know what was happening, but we are told uh, reliably that Nganga Zenzo Buera Pacha, my witch doctors, Nganga, they were frequenting that place like a like the shrine that it was. 
it's a very very hideous place if, if you just enter that place even just your your whole ambience you know your whole personality you just you just feel as if you have entered some kind of horrible horrible place that's how it was so the the, the girls have been rescued police are still carrying out uh, the investigations and all i can say is let us thank god that these young ladies have been found let us thank god that these young ladies have been found those of us who are able to help these young ladies let us reach out to them see how we can help them how we can bring them on their feet they will need um, a lot of counseling they will need a lot of support they've been traumatized they were repeatedly raped we don't know if they were being gang raped I, I, I just don't know but they are going to need a lot of psychological help just to get them back on their field because this kind of trauma it stays with you a lifetime you, you just never forget it and i don't think even us as zambians will ever forget such an instance in closing in closing i would like to urge you my fellow citizens followers and friends let's not relax our guard let's work with the police let's help them with any information that you might have regarding these uh, people that are being that that are on the run that are who are wanted let's help them let's be let's emulate robbie the young man who led the police to the to the crime scene let's emulate him let's be brave it doesn't matter if these guys is your friend his family or he's your party member a criminal is a criminal full stop they have to be treated as such and they have to be given the harshest sentence because what they did to those young ladies is inhumane it shook our society it shook our country it shocked us it even shocked the world because such a thing you only read about it you only see it in movies never in reality i hope this closes the chapter of kidnappings but please stay alert and my appeal is especially to the young ladies students your targets because about three out of those 12 uh, young ladies they were they were students and the way they were picked up one was picked up at choppies 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 more just near the same the same house she was given a lift when she was given a lift she she decides to say that she was uh, about to be kidnapped she managed to send out a video and a number plate for the vehicle which also helped the police in tracing though of course they didn't pinpoint the house young ladies please always stay alert don't entertain strangers don't accept lifts from strangers don't allow anybody to talk you into a store and say no eh, come for an interview somewhere let's go somewhere or let's go meet my boss i have spoken about all those issues repeatedly please stay on the alert you are targets ladies especially because all those were ladies so ladies you are the target of these things they pick you in these cars they give you stories to for you to, to lure you to follow them always stay alert always stay alert never allow yourself to be found in a situation where you are in a vehicle with somebody you don't know you do not know never allow yourself to be walking late at night in the strange and isolated places because we shouldn't sit on our laurels and think this thing is over it could happen again it is up to you and me to stay alert to always ensure at all times you are security conscious because if you are security conscious the chances of such things happening to you are minimal so thank you for tuning in thank you for listening in we have something to be proud of we have something to be happy about we have something to celebrate the lives of these young ladies nothing nothing and nothing in this world is more important than a life and that's why we should celebrate these young ladies not just in words but also in deed they have suffered they have endured a lot to help them we just don't need to say oh you are back we are happy no let's put them back on their feet financially business wise and everything it's the least that we can do to appreciate them for the life that they still have thank you very much good night and god bless this is dj mutati exclusive all right that's all right for you today lovely viewers if you did enjoy the video please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below 
tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutatim Pondum. I love you, peace, I gotta go.